fun, fun. We've got a box problem. Now, in the interest of time, I'll kind of take you through it. So from the previous two examples, what is our general, what are our general first steps? What, we're trying to gather information at the start and then kind of reduce it to a one variable problem, right? So what do we need to identify first? So we need to get the constraint and the objective, right? Good spelling, but yeah. So we need to get the constraint and the objective. So objective. So can someone describe to us what the objective function is going to be? Because that's usually the thing. So L equals three W. Is that a, that's not even a function. That's an equation, Simran. So how can that be an objective function? I don't know about that. Get that out of it. Right, the objective has to be a function, right? Again, what is the objective? The objective is the function that we are trying to find the minimum or maximum of, right? So you need to give me a function. I'm trying to find the minimum or maximum of that. So first look at the problem and ask yourself, what am I trying to find the minimum or maximum of? You're looking for words that are superlatives. You're looking for words like biggest, smallest, cheapest, fastest, right? So Jacqueline says volume, right? This word largest, largest possible volume. So that means the volume is the um, constraint. So Caleb says LWH. So let's be very clear here. So let's let L be L, let L, W, and H be the length, height, and the width of the length, width, and height of the box. We want to maximize So Caleb told me the objective function is a function of three variables, L, W, and H. And it's just the product of those three. So that's the objective function. This is the thing that we are eventually taking the derivative of. The only problem is we have three variables. Hirsch. Uh-oh. Hirsch didn't think I'd call on him. If we have three variables, how many constraints do you think we need? And I think we like we need three. You think you need three? Well, in the previous examples, we had two variables. And so one constraint got it down to one variable. So in this case, if I have three variables, how many do we need? We actually need two constraints. Each constraint eliminates one variable. So you need two constraints in this problem. OK. Because oh, I think like two variables, it's kind of like flawed logic, but like two variables equals one and like. Well, the idea is one constraint. So for instance, like in the previous problem, H equals 2000 over R squared. Yeah. So one constraint gives you one variable in terms of the other. So that eliminates H from the, from the objective. So each constraint eliminates one variable. So if I have three and I'm gonna get down to one, I need two constraints. Okay. Okay, so we want to maximize this subject to the constraints, subject to the two constraints. And someone says, now you use L equals three W, LOL. That is correct, LMAO. So one constraint is going to be L equals three W. Was that actually it, what does it say? Yeah, the length is three times, yeah. So the problem said length is three times width. So that is one constraint. Now I need another constraint. What is going to be the second constraint of my problem? Let me zoom out a little bit. You don't necessarily have to give me a full equation. Okay, good. So Jacqueline says 450 has to equal the surface area, right? Let's put that down over here. So what is this equation? 
What is the total surface area of this box? Do we need a diagram? Uh-oh, I think we're going to need a diagram. Uh-oh. L1, W1, L2, W2. I don't know what. There's only one L. Why are we getting L1 and L2? What, what does this mean? Why we got, what we got so many widths? Okay, so let me, let me draw an ugly box and then I'll make it nice later. Hold on, actually, wait a second. I have a good box. There it is. Yeah. So there you go. That's a that's a diagram of a box. So how many faces? 450 equals 6x squared. So first of all, we don't we're not using the variable x. And 456x squared. I want to be very clear. How can you tell right away that this is absolutely not the constraint? Because it's not giving you one variable in terms of the other. If you thought 450 equals 6x squared, you can just say x equals square root 450 over 6. And now you suddenly have, yeah, I mean, it's not a cube. But if you have a, an equation involving only one variable, that's not a constraint. That's literally telling you what the dimension of the, of the box is. And there's no problem anymore, right? There's no find the box of largest volume because there's only one box. Only one box can satisfy this equation. So make sure you account for all six faces, right? There's six faces to a box. And so 450 has to equal two. So they come in pairs, three pairs. So I think Margaret has it. So LW plus LH plus WH. And multiply the whole thing by two. And that has to equal 450. OK, now we have to do what? What is the next goal in our problem? I identified the objective and identified my two constraints. What would be the next goal of the problem? Solve with respect to W for constraint two, put a constraint in terms of one variable. Okay, good. So it doesn't matter what variable we choose, but I think L is already in terms of W. So let's just put everything in terms of W, right? That'll make everything a little bit easier. Use the constraints to write L and H in terms of w so looking back at this surface area constraint so i put in what so first of all 225 i'm going to divide both sides by two the l is 3w so i have 225 equals 3w squared plus 4wh. Remember, I'm solving for h. So I get what? h equals 225 minus 3w squared all over 4w. And so that's my equation for h in terms of w. Just very simple algebra, right? OK. So I have l in terms of w. I have h in terms of w. And now let me go back to my original constraint to get everything in terms, not my original constraint, I'm sorry, my original objective function and get everything in terms of a, uh, w, right? Because right now my objective is l, w, h. I want that only in terms of w. So our objective. in terms of w is, OK, so my volume was l. So l is 3w, and h is 225 minus 3w squared over 4w. So if we multiply these three things together, let's see, a little bit of algebra. This should simplify, because I think we get some stuff that cancels out, right? 
let's see. A W cancels out, and then I can maybe distribute the W. So doing all that, I get what? 3 over 4 times 225W minus 3W cubed. I think that's that works out. OK, so again, that's just a little bit of algebra. So make sure you actually uh, cancel all that out yourself. Now let's talk about the interval of interest. Any questions so far about identifying the constraint, the objective, doing all this algebra? So far, we have not done any calculus. I want to make that clear. So far, no, no calculus has been done. Any questions so far about any part of the problem? This is more difficult because there are three variables, right? It is a little bit trickier to set up. Margaret, what about you? Do you have any questions? No. No, you're good? OK. Let's talk about the uh, interval of interest. OK, this is actually pretty tough for this problem. So I'm going to kind of explain it to you guys instead of asking for it. So first of all, in general, when you have lengths, a lot of you have so far realized that lengths have to be positive. Actually, lengths don't have to be positive. They can be 0. So lengths are allowed to be 0. Um, we call these degenerate cases. So for instance, if I have a rectangle, so here's L and here's W for a rectangle. If I have L equals 0, what does a rectangle with length 0 look like? It's literally a line segment. Right. So if you're talking about, say, the area of this, right, the area of this might be, say, like 10 or something. What is the area of this? The area is zero. The reason why I actually want to math, it might seem weird to include L equals zero as a case. I mean, why would you want, why would you consider length equals zero? There's actually a good mathematical reason for it. If you're allowed to include the endpoints, right, that's actually better for us because we know from 4.1, if the endpoints of the domain are allowed to be included in consideration, then we have a lot easier time finding the minor max, right? Because we might be guaranteed the minor max. You can just check the endpoints and the critical points, right? It's a lot easier for us. So in general, you should include the endpoints if it makes sense. So length equals zero is perfectly okay. So having said that, that means in our problem, we must have that L is greater than or equal to zero, W is greater than or equal to zero, and H is greater than or equal to zero. But what does that mean in terms of W? Well, in this particular case, L being greater than or equal to W uh, zero just means three W is greater than or equal to zero, which is the same thing as W is greater than or equal to zero. Remember, because remember L is just three W? So that doesn't really affect anything. The W doesn't really give you anything either. But the H, however, actually does give you something. This was the expression for H in terms of W. And this actually tells you a few things. So first of all, if I'm dividing by W, W cannot equal zero. Otherwise, H is not even defined, right? That makes sense because if you go back to the constraint equation for surface area, W equals zero would give you 225 equals zero. That makes no sense. So W actually cannot equal zero in this particular problem, but in general, you know, you might allow lengths to be zero. So W actually has to be not equal to zero. And then if you solve the numerator greater than or equal to zero, um, you just get what? W has to be less than or equal to square root of 75, right? And that 75 is coming from square root of 225 divided by three. So that's square root of 75. So this is actually a very interesting problem to get the interval of interest. So our interval is curiously 0 to square root 75. The 0 is not included, but the square root 75 is included. That's interesting. You might want to later think about what it would mean 
for W. If W goes to zero, you actually get a box that's literally just a stick. So no, no surface area. But the square root of 75 gives you a box that's literally just like the lid. So there is surface area. So it's interesting to think about what the extreme cases actually correspond to. Margaret, you're confused. You have a scrunched up face right now. What's your question? I don't really have a question, but I didn't really get it. So get what? Which question? So you do have a question. <laughs> like the H, like the interval. Well, the H interval, so just to very quickly go over that, uh, take notes, think later. No, we can think now also, Caleb. <laughs> so just to very make very clear. So this was the expression for H. And if I'm saying that H has to be non-negative, right? Length has to be non-negative. For this thing to be non-negative, first of all, you can't divide by zero. So W can't be zero. So that's why zero is no longer included. The second thing is, if you set the uh, greater than or equal to zero, well, remember, w is positive. So you get 225 minus 3w squared greater than or equal to zero. And then this is just some algebra, right? Divided by 3, 75 greater than or equal to, and then take a square root. OK. So that's how we get that. The nice thing is w is positive. So you don't have to worry about like switching the sign up anything. In any event, let's write down our goal. So our goal is to find the dimensions of the box, right? So find the value of W that gives the largest volume, right? That gives absolute maximum of my function. And we've almost forgotten about the, what the function was. The function was this thing up here, the volume. on the interval zero square root 75. Now, what's gonna be really fun about this problem is the interval is actually not going to matter anyway. So all of that was for naught. But we have to actually kind of see exactly why the interval is not gonna matter. Any questions up until this point? Again, this is the non-calculus portion of the problem. We have not done any calculus, no limits, no nothing, right? No, no limits, no derivatives, nothing. A lot of students usually find the first part of the problem, sometimes the hardest part of the problem. And I, I you know, it's, it's sometimes not easy. Okay, so now the last part of the problem is, you know, we find the critical numbers, then we do our justification. So we may not finish this in the next two minutes. But that's fine. We'll finish up on Tuesday. So my derivative is 225 minus 9w squared. Set that equal to 0. And you get w equals 5. You actually get plus or minus 5, but the minus we don't, we don't care about, right? Maybe I'll actually write that. We don't care about the minus one. You get the minus because remember you're taking a square root with the w, so that's why you get two values of w. Do you actually get five? I think you should get five. Two twenty twenty-five divided by nine is twenty-five. So square root is five. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so now you have a few things at your disposal, right? You've you've pretty much solved the problem. You've pretty much found that w equals five will give you the largest volume, hopefully. But you do have to justify it, right? In the last two examples, we've always justified it. In the first example, we did the first derivative test. And the last example, we did the second derivative test. So you can use either or. You don't have to use both. Use either or. They gave you the same conclusion. Now, typically for me, I usually go the second derivative test route because I just think usually finding the second derivative isn't too bad. If finding the second derivative is kind of going to be a nightmare, then just do the first derivative test. But for me, I think the second derivative in this case is pretty easy. So observe that the second derivative of this is 3 fourths times negative 18 w. And that's obviously negative if w is positive, which is negative. For all w greater than 0. And what do we about, know about negative? If I have a negative second derivative in the last minute of class, Rachel, a negative second derivative means what about the concavity? 
down. Concave down. And if I have concave down, that means whatever critical point I found must be what? It must be a maximum. So I'll write that in the notes um, and then I'll, I'll complete that sentence. But we are right at time 11.10, but that pretty much is the end of the problem, right? I found that this function's concave down. Therefore, whatever I found must have been a maximum. And so that means I'm done. W equals five gives the maximum volume. And you can always go back to get what L and H are if you want that, right? Um, so just 